Welcome to the Siren Monitor. This is the Siren Monitor outside of its casing. Uh, what you'll see there is, uh, um, this is the case that you see on the photograph. And the reason why it's not in its casing is because I need to cut the <coughs> slot in the top of the case called the Arduino Touch. Um, and once I cut the slot, uh, we'll be able to mount it in there uh, properly. Now, looking at the unit, what you'll see is got the touchscreen SD card. If I flip the unit over, you've got the ESP32, which does most of the uh, coding uh, for the screen, SD card, Wi Fi, web server, etc. Uh, but then you've got the listening device, which is the Arduino Nano BLE Sense, which is using the edge impulse uh, to detect the uh, siren noises um, accordingly. These two are connected via serial, uh, running at 115,000, uh, and there's a few jumpers here, which I've configured, um, such as setting the TFT um, to be able to calibrate it. Whether I enable a buzzer on the touchscreen or not uh, is another setting. Uh, and so, um, and there's a variety of spare pins should come up with any other ideas. Uh, so, that's the device. I'm going to power the device on now. Um, and what you'll see is a boot up screen, a Wi-Fi connection screen, and then the main screen of the device. So you see a landing screen there, siren monitor going to go off and connect to the last known good Wi-Fi. If it can't find the last known good Wi-Fi, it will actually um, turn itself into a wireless access point. You then connect to its IP address to reconfigure the Wi-Fi settings to whichever ones you want. Now, looking at the landing screen here, this is the main screen of the device. There isn't any other screens to go to. Everything you can do is via this main touch interface. So starting at the top, you have your title. Uh, you then have some icons. You have a pulse icon, SD card icon, wireless icon. Um, this this uh, uh, what looks to be a notepad here and a clipboard that is um, for categorization, which I'll talk about shortly. You've got the last ten events, date, time, type being category, and the accuracy, which is fed back from the Edge Impulse um, system of the Arduino Nano, and the date and time, which obviously is set via the internet. So I'll just quickly go through the controls, there isn't much to it. So it will sit here quite happily and it will wait for a siren event um, and when it hears a siren event it will then um, uh, play it accordingly on the screen. So just as a demonstration here, you see the last event was 1754.39 uh, I just so happen to have a police car passing by right as we speak. And you can see there is a new event now at 17.55 and 3 seconds, 99% uh, accuracy. Uh, so it's automatically populated display, it's automatically written itself to the SD card, uh, so the data isn't lost, um, and it will just carry on. Now, because uh, of sirens take a little while to pass, once it detects a siren, it will actually wait 10 seconds before it makes another detection. And that way we limit the false positives from being displayed. If we now go into some of the functions, um, the heartbeat that I mentioned earlier, that is um, to indicate that the connection between the ESP32 and the Arduino Nano is alive. So every 10 seconds, the Arduino Nano will send an interrupt request to the ESP32, and the ESP32 is expecting it, and while it's getting an interrupt request, uh, the icon is a pulse and it's green. If it misses uh, four interrupt requests, so if the Arduino Nano starts playing up, it'll go amber, and then if it gets to a fifth uh, one missing, it will go red, which indicates the two devices have stopped talking to each other. 
We then have the SD card, which there is a bit of functionality on it. If I press the SD card icon, you will actually see um, it will come up with this option, data file copy. And it'll say, are you sure? And you simply say yes or no. And all that does is it takes a copy of the CSV file uh, and puts it to one side. So if, for example, you were just about to start editing the categories, which I'll go into in a moment, uh, you've got a copy of the file uh, of, the, of the last time before you did the categories. Obviously, I have to take the SD card out of this device and put it onto a PC or a Mac to edit the uh, CSV files, but it just allows you to do a quick copy uh, while you're on here. The next function I'd like to talk about is the categorization, which is important because um, as in my particular case, sirens are coming past, we don't know whether they're police, fire or ambulance. Uh, and I do have CCTV that looks up the driveway. So what I've built is a simple system that if we press the category button here, it says update categories and you get a choice of yes or no, and I say yes. And then it will show you the first event where it's uncategorized, which is indicated by the U. It gives you a date and time, and that allows me to go and check the CCTV and then choose what the event was. So if I say, for example, this was a police car, it's then set that, and you can see there, uh, the, before the last U is now a P. If I do that again, it will go to the next U, once I say yes, of course. Uh, and let's say if I choose an ambulance for this one, you can see now we've got an A above a P. If I do it once again, I'll then choose a fire. And then finally, uh, because you do get false positives, um, you know, uh, for example, when we set the bow alarm on the house, that triggers an event because it's very similar to a siren. I've got a halt symbol here, which is just other. So that titles it as O. Now, um, when all categories are updated, if I quickly clear the last two, uh, you'll see what it does. It will actually tell you. So there's no there's no categories left to, to apply. So if I now update categories again and I hit yes, it will just say all categories are set and go back to the main screen. And finally, this picture shows the web server up and running with a list of the last 10 events, which is the same as the TFT display. This website refreshes every 60 seconds and just enables you to have a look at what's going on without going to the siren monitor itself.